Welcome into the Boys Collective episode 31 right here on 105.3 The Fan on YouTube. My name is Kevin Gray alongside Super Bowl winning scout and one-fourth of the G-Bag Nation, Brian Broaddus. It is our Wednesday show here as the Cowboys are in the middle of preparations for the Washington football team on Sunday night football. Brian, happy Wednesday to you. Good to see you. How are things in uh, Cowboys land on this uh, this Wednesday? Yeah, here? no, all good. You know, you, you got to see the football team play last night. That was a that was a gut wrenching loss for them. If you mm -hmm. look for the playoff picture, and you know, in Philadelphia, it looks like that they're they have found themselves running the football. The defense is not giving up much points and. You know, they took advantage of the football team last night and, you know, their inability with, you know, the backup quarterback. And, you know, they've just they've they've been decimated with the COVID and injuries and stuff like that. So this is a football team that really as the week goes on and here we are already Wednesday. And now you've got to kind of figure out who they have and who they don't have and it might be a little bit harder to, to play with that in mind. But you did play this team two weeks ago. And so, you know, maybe some similar uh, game plan ideas, some similar thoughts. Maybe you could pull back some things that you uh, that worked in that game. Defensively, it was outstanding. So, you know, the football team is going to have their hands full with a with a reasonably healthy Dallas Cowboys uh, defense that gave them huge problems two weeks ago. The Dallas Cowboys have won four of the last five matchups at home against the Washington football team. So. The Cowboys just coming back at home just in time for some home cooking as they play their next two games at home before they finish up on the road against the Philadelphia Eagles. As you mentioned, the Eagles starting to run the ball better. Miles Sanders look good yeah. uh, in their game. They are against the Washington football team who are now six and seven, although they will be very comfortable uh, on Sunday as they're bringing their own benches with them uh, from Washington. So <laughs> they'll be fairly comfortable inside of at and uh, at and Stadium. If you haven't seen that story, as uh, you yeah. can say hi to Jeff Cavanaugh as he looks in the background there. Um, yeah, he, he, he knows that he's uh, – I, I text him. I told him I was going to be doing this. So I'm sure he's, like, waving it. There you go. Yeah, yeah there he is. Jeff Cavanaugh. <laughs> yeah. And Corey Majors, too, having some fun here on the boys collected. But, yeah, they'll be comfortable at least on uh, on Sunday night inside of AT&T Stadium. Uh, hopefully they won't be too comfortable as the Dallas Cowboys defense looks to make them uncomfortable, uh, as they have been doing many opponents during the second half uh, of the year. Before we get to the defense, let's jump into the broadest files here, because obviously uh, for this Cowboys team, health is still of a concern, namely at the left tackle spot. Uh, Jerry Jones telling us on Tuesday that he's very optimistic about Tyron Smith. Uh, as far as his coming back and what that looks like and whether or not that needs to happen uh, either this week or in the next couple of weeks. Uh, from your perspective, what are you hearing about Tyron Smith, his status, and what that could look like uh, going into yeah. this week and the yeah, next I, couple I, of weeks? I kind of feel like KG getting the, the, the vibe from people in the organization that it was going to be uh, – it was going to be something that they were going to try and get him ready for the, the Cardinals game. I think that was the something that, you know, if they could find a way to get through this one again this week, uh, you know, with maybe the combination again of Steele and Ty and Sicky and guys like that, that it might be something that, that you know, that they would do. But the, the plan just talking to folks over there was, hey, how do we get things right for the care uh, for the Cardinals game? So I think that's, is he's making progress right now, great, but it's more about progress to, to get him ready for that game against uh, against the Cardinals. Mike McCarthy saying that he is feeling a lot better. He will continue yeah. to work with the rehab group uh, when it comes to practice as the Cowboys are back to practice uh, on Wednesday. So that's going to be a major story for this team in the final three weeks of the season, how quickly they can get Smith back in order to not only be ready for the rest of the regular season, but in obviously – uh, into the playoffs where the Cowboys are obviously headed uh, as it appears. So that's good news. And honestly, for the Cowboys, after kind of getting over the COVID outbreak, what's been interesting about this team this year is that health wise, they've been OK relatively when it comes to, you know, their health after games and much the same uh, yeah. as it was after they beat uh, the Giants. So at least that's a comforting note for most Cowboys fans to know that this team, for the most part, is healthy uh, going into the final three weeks of the season, just needed to get Tyron Smith back there. Let's stick with the offense, though, because I thought you brought up something very interesting uh, with the G-Bag Nation with respect to how this offense is targeting its receivers, who they're targeting, and where they're targeting at. And maybe that can shed a little, a little bit more light on what's going on with this offense that, yes, is still 
technically the number two offense in the National Football League still, but we've known over the last several weeks has not performed to the capabilities that we saw from the first six weeks of the season. What light can you shed on some of that that can hopefully lend some more perspective on not only what the Cowboys have been struggling with, but more importantly, how they can turn it around going forward to give us a better idea that this offense is actually improving going to the final three weeks of the season? Usually on the G-Bag Nation, I make people's heads explode with numbers because I never really explain them the right way. So, Say it again, Brian. Yeah, Jeff just sitting <laughs> there, there you with go. me now. And he's, yeah, so he understands. But, yeah, since week eight, and that would be the Minnesota game, this team has really struggled to throw the ball down the field. And I'm not saying anything that Cowboy fans don't already know. But if you look at the number of targets, whether it's deep left, deep middle, or deep right, you know, the inconsistencies that they've had, even, you know, making those as, you know, we, we, they call it an analytics and I'm learning these things, the success rate of targets, you know, and sometimes Mickey Spagnola, when I, he and I were working together for DallasCowboys.com, we always had this argument about targets, you know, and what if the ball's way high and what if the ball's way in the ground and what, you know, what if, you know, all these things. But if you do look at the way the analytics kind of break down to where the Cowboys have had success with the, with their targets, it just hasn't been down the field. And again, you know, you look at CD lamb, when you look at his numbers, you know, deep left, he's only about 29% success rate for targets, deep middles, about 25% and deep, right? No success, uh, zero there. Um, Michael Gallup, 67% success rate, deep left, 50% success rate, deep middle, 0% deep, right. Uh, you know, go to Amari Cooper, 0% deep left, 100% deep middle, 0% deep right. And this is all since mm. week, this is all since week eight, again, the Minnesota game. The, the, the player that's had the really the most success for you, and I don't know if it's success really, is that you've got Dalton Schultz is 50% deep left, 50% deep middle. He has nothing deep right. Cedric Wilson is 33% deep left, 50% deep middle, and 67% deep right. So as you can see, the Cowboys just have not. And this maybe could tie into, you know, Jeff and I did a, a, a segment the other day on the G-Bag Nation talking about blitzing Dak Prescott. And I went back and checked some of my notes after the New England game. You know, when he had the hurt calf and stuff mm -hmm. like that, didn't play the Minnesota game, of course. But you look at the you look at the, the the blitz rates, him and Lamar Jackson were two of the highest blitzed quarterbacks in the league. And 16, uh, you know, at that time, Dak Prescott had 16 touchdowns. Eight of those touchdowns were 20 plus yards under blitz conditions. So teams aren't blitzing Dak Prescott. So now it's like, okay, well, how do you get the ball down the field? And Jeff and I were talking about, you know, these teams are playing that shell coverage, the two deep look. And so how do you get teams out of that? You run the football. They haven't had success running the football. The backs haven't been healthy. The line hasn't done enough of a good enough job. So teams are like, listen, we don't think that Dak can run the ball. He's not going to throw the ball down the field when you make him have to read or he has to see the coverage. And then the receivers, when they get the opportunity in those zones, we talk about deep left, deep middle, deep right, very simplistic way of saying it, mm -hmm. but they're not having success even then. So there's a lot going on with this football team. And, you know, they've got to figure out those, what, you know, everybody likes to talk about those like cover two beaters. When there's two safeties sitting on the hash, vertical routes, you know, how do you, how do you handle that? Uh, you know, outs, things like that, you know, things to try and get teams or, hey, just run the ball better with Tony Pollard and then kind of find a way to get that safety down and will they start respecting your running game again? Because teams aren't going to blitz stack until he proves that, you know, until he proves that he can make these throws down the field or they get a running game going, you know, I think they're going to, you're going to see a lot of the same uh, fronts and coverages that he's seen since, uh, since week eight. And I'm curious because based on some of those numbers in the way that, you know, usually with zone coverage, you should be able to have kind of the middle of the field open, which is interesting because you right. talked about Schultz's numbers and how right. effective he's been in the middle. And it seems like just from the eye test, it feels like that Prescott trusts Schultz quite a bit with those, you know, sitting in he those does. soft zones and being able to catch the football and make some things happen there. 
is it a situation from a quarterback's perspective where if receivers are able to win routes and be able to beat their man in trying to get things open, does the quarterback have to throw with better anticipation, even with these guys not being able to necessarily get the kind of targets based on where they are on the field to be able to maybe throw, quote unquote, some of these receivers open yeah. when it comes yeah. to trying to you know get things down the field a little bit better? Yeah, I think a little bit better anticipation. I think, you know, again, Jeff and I had this conversation yesterday and I asked him the question and I'll ask you the question, too. Does Dak really trust this offensive line? Does, you know, and maybe he does now a little bit more with what, you know, with Connor Williams back in the lineup. I mean, I, I, I kind of feel like that, you know, in talking to people in the organization, Connor Williams is a guy that Dak Prescott really likes because he feels like he's a guy that would have his back. And no disrespect to Connor McGovern, but he's a young guy. You know, sure. I mean, he's a, you know, we, we saw what happened last year when, you know, when Andy Dalton got whacked in that uh, Colts, uh, I mean, excuse me, the, the football team game and nobody mm -hmm. really went to his defense. And you're like going, you know, and Dak sees that kind of stuff, you know, and the one thing that you can look at with, with uh, Connor, you know, Connor Williams is he's a guy that's kind of a fighter, feisty, tough guy, dog kind of a guy, if you want to say it. But, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with Dak's confidence. You know, does he have the time? I mean, how many sacks has he taken so far, KG? where it's at the line, it's a sack for minus one, it's mm -hmm. zero, it's minus two. You know, sacks right around the line of scrimmage kind of tell you that, that he's he's a little bit tentative about letting it go. He's a little bit tentative about running, you know, when he probably could go forward and get two, three yards and not, you know, surrender a sack. Or so, at least yeah, climb the pocket to try and extend plays. And yeah, maybe find something downfield. Yeah, yeah, anticipation throws. And, you know, let's be honest, too, these receivers – you know, they've been banged up at various times. I mean, Amari Cooper has been, whether it's uh, physical injuries or COVID injuries, I mean, he's dealing with that. C.D. Lamb was dealing with a concussion. He was dealing with a bad ankle in the Denver game. Michael Gallup was just coming back from all the foot problems, you know, he had since week one. So this group, you know, what we thought was a strength right now is really treading water. And the quarterback probably doesn't have a lot of confidence in the line, probably doesn't have a lot of confidence in the receivers, and they're not making plays as many plays as they made early in the year uh, for him. So, you know, I, I think it's going to have to be on, on Dak to maybe, like you said, make some of those throws. We saw a game, you know, where uh, he threw the ball to CD and CD was able to make some, you know, plays on the move. You know, that's, that's mm -hmm. where CD lamb is at his absolute best. And I think they need to kind of get back to that, but he, you know, he had some bad drops last week, you know, and it, sure. he's one of the guys, when you look at the overall guys in the league, I think he's got eight total drops this year. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, three of them were last week, but man, I mean, he, he's a big time player for you. And you know, like you say, you need to get him the ball, but if you have to anticipate throws, you know, you need to probably do that a little bit better too. Yeah, because he's been able to make the tight window throws at times. Like you, one in particular, the CD Lamb, you know, throwing they had in the Saints game was one of the best throws that I've seen him make all season long. To be honest with you, so uh, that and, and I wanted to ask that because as we evaluate this team defensively, we know how far along this team has come. But now, as we get ready for the final three games of the season into the playoffs, the question now becomes: How do we evaluate this offense in context of what they can be relative to the playoff run we think they can make? Because I don't know about you, but I feel like this is a team that can make an NFC championship game type of run if this offense finds even half of what it was during the first six weeks of the season, given how we think this defense now will continue to perform. Based on the way the offense is playing right now, can this team still make that kind of potential NFC championship game run or beyond? even if they're not playing at the full capabilities that they were during the first yeah, six weeks. The defense gives you a chance. The defense gives you a chance to get some more possessions, maybe one or two more possessions. They're going to turn people over, I believe, continue with their pass rush, pocket presence, all that stuff. You know, I think they're going to get turnovers that way. You know, you got really highly intelligent football players like uh, Demarcus Lawrence punching balls loose. You know, other guys see that on tape, and so there were – don't tackle the ball. Try and punch it loose, you know. Get guys around the ball. So I, I think that's a, a possibility. I think a couple of things have to happen have to happen for this offense to really turn it around. I think they need to – I think it needs to be more of Tony Pollard. I think it needs to be Tony Pollard early in football games. Again, Jeff and I were talking about this yesterday. If teams are not going to blitz you, there's really no reason to play, uh, to play uh, Ezekiel Elliott all those snaps. You know, there just really isn't. I mean, he's the best blitz pickup guy. 
But if teams aren't going to blitz you, put Tony Pollard in there and try and pop some runs, get the running game going, get people to back off you. They need to get Tyron Smith back, though, too. That's another thing. They, they you know, it's going to maybe be a week 17 before they actually first time play with Smith, Williams, Biotish, uh, Martin, and Collins, which they talked about all during training camp, how excited they were about having all those guys. So I, I think it's going to come down to those two things. I, I think if you can get the running game going for Dak, that'll give him confidence. You get better protection or better ability to run the ball up front. I think that gives him more confidence too. And then I think that helps the receivers because again, if they could get people out of playing cover too, that will give them more space to make some of these plays. So I think those couple things have to happen for this offense to turn it around. It's interesting because with a minimum of 100 attempts this year, Tony Pollard is averaging 5.7 yards attempt an attempt, yeah. which is and, better and he, than and you can throw him the ball. You can yeah. throw him the ball. He's like these 34 of 38 on, you know, catches to targets, which, you know, I mean, he, yeah. Is he, is he, is a good a blitz pickup guy as Ezekiel? No, but teams don't blitz you. They play cover two now. You know, there's no reason to have Zeke in there you know, as much as he is when you can try and run teams out of playing a certain type of coverage against you. Early in the game, establish the run a little bit. If you you pop some runs with Tony, a 17-yard run, a 13-yard run, you know, an eight-yard run, that, that's the kind of stuff that gets defensive coordinators' attention. Right now, you're not getting that with Ezekiel Elliott. And, you know, this, this offensive staff has proven something to me. They're willing – they're willing to make moves. They've changed the guards out. They've done things, you know, they've, they've changed some starters out here and there. I mean, the staff is, you know, they did it on defense, you know? So to me, if I'm Mike McCarthy, I'm looking at the numbers and I'm saying, why are we not playing Tony Pollard more if we're not getting blitzed? That Tony Pollard average of 5.7 is better than Jonathan Taylor and Nick Chubb this year. That just shows you how effective Pollard has been as far as the run game is concerned. And hopefully a function of that will be the offensive line improving going forward. That gets us to the last portion of our show for today. Obviously, as the Cowboys continue to get ready to take on the Washington football team, they currently sit as the number two seed in the NFC playoffs if the playoffs were to start today. Now, as we look at this team getting ready for Washington, they're going to have to be in virtual meetings for the next few days, obviously, with COVID and what's going on there. But from a preparation standpoint, as we look forward to the rest of the week and into the weekend, what do you specifically want to see, whether it be offensively or defensively, in the final three games that gives you a better idea that this team can make that kind of run to the NFC Championship and beyond that we maybe not necessarily haven't seen or paid attention to that could be a major factor in these final three games going forward? Yeah, I, think, I think defensively, you know, you really like what you've seen. I would like to see him play a little bit better run defense. You know, they, I mean, mm. the, the situation with the Giants and, and a couple of the big runs that Booker had in that football game were, were, were mental mistakes, physical mistakes too. I mean, you know, if you're Keanu Neal, you have to, if you're the edge man, you have to fill the edge. You can't wait and allow – Booker. I mean, it wasn't like it was Saquon, Saquon Barkley running the ball. It was Booker. You know, it was, it's, it's a guy that you should have been able to step up. It should have been a three, four yard game. I want to see them eliminate those big type of chunk, those chunk plays like that. I, I think that's something that to me is, especially in the running game, if you get some teams that are being, you know, and, and at the end of the season, and it might not mean anything, Philadelphia is going to test your manhood running the football. And they're going to test you to see if you're good enough. If you're not good enough, they're going to put about 228 yards up on you. And you're probably going to go home with a loss because they, they won't, you know, they, they, they will take your strength away, which is playing pass defense and rushing the passer. So to me, I'd like to see a little bit better fit and finish in the run game because the pass rush stuff has been just outstanding. The coverage has been really outstanding overall. So a little bit better fit in that. Offensively, I'd like to see what we just talked about, though. I'd like to see more Tony Pollard. I'd like to see the ability to run that ball and try and help Dak Prescott. Don't let people just sit sit on you and play cover two the whole game, and then all of a sudden you can't get receivers open you know, down the field. They're going to need to be able to throw the ball down the field, and these receivers are going to be able to make, need to make plays down the field. So all those things that I was talking about, uh, Lamb with a zero deep right, Gallup with a zero deep right, uh, Cooper with a zero deep right. I, I, I need to see that ball going down the field a little bit better. I need to see the protection improve a little bit. And maybe that maybe that's what you get 
Maybe that's what you get when you get Tyron Smith back. But that ball needs to go down the field better. The quarterback needs to have a little bit more confidence throwing that ball down the field. And I think those are the two things I'm looking for right now. Cowboys got three games to be able to finish off what has been a terrific season for them, having won their last three games on the road, have their next two at home before finishing up against the Philadelphia Eagles team that for some reason all of a sudden likes to run the football. <laughs> and, they do, and, they do, and they do it well. They do it yeah. well. They, they really physically, and watching the game last night, they physically, and I watched again this morning, they physically beat up on the football team. And the football team has got – Big inside guys, you know, they had their defensive end back sweat. And, you know, they – they and Holcomb, the Mike linebacker, is a good player too. And Jamin Davis is a good player too. So they physically took it to the football team running in it. And that's that's going to be their identity going forward now. They, 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 they limit – you know, you saw what happened when the, early in that game. You know, unfortunately, Hurts threw an interception off the back of Dallas Goddard's foot. But what happened? He's in the pocket. He's moving around. He fumbles – you know, they can't have those turnovers. I mean, that's what that, but, but, but they can run the football with the backs they have. That is going to be a tough team to have to deal with in the playoffs. If they get into the playoffs. Should be an interesting final three weeks of the season as the Cowboys get ready to take on the Washington football team on Sunday night football. You can find Brian on Twitter at Brian Broaddus. You can find me on Twitter at Kevin Gray sports. Be sure to subscribe to one Oh five through the fan here on YouTube, and you can find all of our work on 105.3thefan.com and all of our social media platforms at 105.3thefan. We will have our Friday show as we get you ready for the Washington football team taking on the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday Night Football, your full game preview to get you primed and ready to see if the Cowboys can lock up officially the NFC East on Sunday night by taking on the Washington football team. Brian, as always, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. Look forward to talking to you on Friday. That's great, KG. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.